Hey guys, how's it going? In this video we're going to look at Charles's Law, also known as the Volume Temperature Law. Now it's worth pointing out that this video follows on from the previous theory video on the Charles's Law experiment, so if you haven't watched that already, I'd recommend doing that. So let's get started. So the conclusion from the theory video on Charles's Law experiment was that volume is directly proportional to temperature for a fixed mass of gas at constant pressure. This is what we called Charles's Law. So this was it in symbol form, V is directly proportional to T, and this was it in word form. So remember all this means is that as temperature increases, volume increases as well, or as temperature decreases, volume decreases as well. So just like we did for Boyle's Law and Galo-Sachs Law, we're going to form an equation from this relationship in symbol form here. So starting with V is directly proportional to T, remember if we want to get rid of this proportional sign and introduce an equal sign instead, then we need to multiply this thing on the right hand side by a constant. So we end up with V equals a constant times T. However, it's always better to get the constant on its own, so if we divide both sides by T here to leave the constant on its own on the right hand side, we end up with V divided by T equals a constant. Or in other words, whenever we divide a volume by a temperature, it should equal a constant value. So this allows us to form the following relationship here. So we have V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. So remember, just like for Boyle's Law and Galo-Sachs Law, whenever we have something equals a constant, we can just make that thing equal to the thing itself. So V over T is equal to V over T, but you'll notice I've included the subscripts 1s and 2s because you're going to be dealing with questions which have initial and final volumes and also initial and final temperatures. So it will be one volume value changing to another value and one temperature value changing to another value. So we have here that V1 and V2 are the initial and final volumes measured in meters cubed, centimeters cubed or liters depending on what is used in the question, and T1 and T2 are the initial and final temperatures measured in Kelvin. So this equation only holds when temperature is measured in Kelvin, not in degrees Celsius. Because remember this equation has been formed using the relationship that V is proportional to T, which was found from the graph in the experiment video in Charles's Law, where we had to introduce the Kelvin scale in order to have a graph with a straight line going through the origin. So you cannot use this equation with temperature in degrees Celsius, it has to be in Kelvin. Lastly, we're going to look at how to explain Charles's Law in terms of the kinetic model i.e. the particles in a container. So consider a fixed mass of gas at a constant pressure in a sealed container. When the container is heated, the temperature of the gas increases. The average kinetic energy and therefore the speed of the particles increases as a result. So this is exactly how we started off explaining Galo-Sachs law, so it's quite similar. Notice if we keep a constant pressure, if we heat up the gas, then the particles are going to gain speed and they're going to move around more because they've got more kinetic energy. We can then say that this causes them to collide with the walls of the container harder and more often, and therefore they exert more force per unit area. And in order to maintain a constant pressure, the gas itself must expand. This means that the volume of the gas and therefore the container increases. So you'll notice here before we've heated up the gas, we've got this small volume, this small container, but then the container itself has increased in volume, i.e. the gas has increased in volume because the gas has had to expand due to the increasing pressure of the particles against the walls of the container. So remember, we want to keep pressure the same, we want to keep it constant, and the only way to do that is to increase the volume of the container. So remember, if you're asked to explain Charles's law or the volume temperature law using the kinetic model, then you need to mention the idea of an increased temperature causing an increase in kinetic energy or average kinetic energy. You then need to talk about the collisions with the walls of the container, and in this case, it's going to cause the volume to increase to maintain a constant pressure. Lastly, it says to note that the gas molecules speed up since the temperature increases, just like they did in Galo-Sachs law. Now, I'm just going to show you a quick simulation to help you visualize this. So you can see here that I've got my particles in the container and they're all moving about randomly in all directions. You can see I've also got a fixed pressure of 12.8 atmospheres, and that's because I'm keeping pressure constant here, and I've chosen the option to allow volume of the container to change, but we could also select this one here, which is keeping pressure constant, allowing temperature to change. So you'll notice that if I increase the temperature of my gas, then the box increases, i.e. the volume of my gas increases. And we can explain that in terms of the kinetic model. So remember to explain this, we can say that as temperature increases, the particles will gain speed and therefore kinetic energy, and therefore they will collide with the walls of the container more often and with more force, and therefore there's an increased force per unit area, and therefore an increased pressure. However, we don't want pressure to be increased here, we want it to remain the same. So the only way to keep pressure the same is to expand the gas itself, i.e. to expand the container here or increase the volume. So therefore we've got an increased temperature causing an increase in volume. 
But the opposite is also true, so if we cool down our gas by removing heat from it, then the particles will move with smaller speed, and therefore they will have a smaller kinetic energy, and therefore they will collide with the walls of the container less often, and therefore exert less force per unit area on the walls, and therefore there will be a decreased pressure. But again, we want to keep pressure the same, so in order to keep pressure the same, we need to decrease the volume of the container, i.e. decrease the volume of the gas. So we can see that a decrease in temperature causes a decrease in volume of the gas. So what we've done is explain Charles's law in terms of the kinetic model, so you need to make sure you can do this with reference to the kinetic energy of the particles, the number of collisions of the particles with the container walls, and also the change in the size of the container here. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.